All right, I'm here right now with Dylan, who is the coach for Immortals. Dylan Falco is his name, actually. Falco, do you have like a uh, rivalry with Echo Fox, given the Fox Falco connection? Uh, no, not particularly, but uh, I play Smash, so it's always a thing when people see that's my uh, last name. Okay. Do you play Falco? Uh, no, I do not. All right. Well, that's a huge disappointment. Let's get into it. Uh, Immortals, this split, does not have sort of the dominance that you guys showed last split. What is going on? Is that on you guys? Is that on the rest of the teams getting really good? What's happening? Well, uh, a lot of people keep actually saying that. Uh, I'm actually really, really pleased with our progress so far this split. Um, we didn't boot camp for a month in Korea like other teams did. Um, we were really focused on ending the split strong, I think is our most important thing, as well as using best of threes to play a lot of different strategies and um, experiment, experiment a little more, whereas before we would just prep for best of ones. Okay, and so do you, how do you feel about sort of the best of three strategy that you're talking about? How's that playing out? Um, pretty good. I feel like we learn way more from each best of three set than we did in nearly any best of one last split because most of, honestly, our best of ones last split were just stomps, and it's really hard to learn the weaknesses of what you're doing if you're just playing one game and you're winning decisively. Now, I know that we're talking about stuff within the context of Immortals, but from a broader sense, do you think that the best of threes are really going to help North America whenever we get to Worlds? Is that is this a big enough change that we'll be more prepared for the best of threes that we see there outside of group stage? Yeah, of course. Any experience in best of series is just going to help you, right? For best ofs at Worlds, yeah. Okay. But do you think it's going to actually be significant? Um, it's not going to be like the make or break single-handedly carrying NA to World Finals or anything, but it's definitely going to help, yeah, okay. quite a bit. Now, uh, what do you think of the other North American LCS teams? Because Obviously, we've seen some pretty strong showings from TSM, for instance, some of the others. Do you feel like that is a sign that the North American teams are getting a lot better? Or is it just kind of like everybody's kind of just trading wins and things are the same thing they've always been? I think um, this year in general has been really good for NNA. Uh, a lot of the orgs are trying really hard with support staff and with trying to build the most competitive roster that they can uh, with their resources, as well as a lot of teams going to Korea in the offseason. It's definitely a really good year for NA. Um, I think last year, especially near the end of the year, or last split, near the end of the split, um, some of the teams kind of were struggling a little bit. TSM obviously wasn't as strong as they are now. Uh, we kind of dropped the ball in semis. Um, so I think this, in summer, you're kind of going to get to see teams at their full potential. Okay. Now you have Wild Turtle. Yep. He's from Toronto, I believe. Yep. Summer finals in Toronto. Have you talked to Turtle about this? Is this a motivating factor for him at all? I'm actually from Toronto as well, like just like 20, yeah, 25 yeah. minutes away from Toronto. So okay. obviously I'm obscenely excited that the finals are going to be there. Okay. I hope we make it. Yeah, are you, and you guys are, is this, do you guys ever talk about that? Like, let's do this for Toronto? Yeah. Um, it would be really nice to win the LCS in Turtles in my home city, yes, for sure. Very good. That's such a polite answer. I'm like, are you guys jammed about it? And you're like, it would be very yeah. nice to win for us because we're from that city. I agree with that statement. No, we were really, really excited, actually. Okay, yeah. there we go. That's the hype that I'm looking for. All right, so uh, what do you sort of, uh, by the way, I'm just kind of curious about this because I feel like it's really hard for the audience and the community to ever really evaluate a coach and a coach's sort of role. I mean, yeah. the only thing you can kind of do is like, oh, this team was not doing really well and then they changed coaches and now they're doing well. That must mean that the coach is good. Do you ever have insight or can you sort of get insight into how much a coach impacts other teams? The only coaches that I for sure know how good or bad they are are coaches that I've worked with okay. in the past. And I've like I've worked with some really good coaches. I've worked with Loco, I've worked with Prolly in EU. So I can vouch for them. Um, other than that, it's really hard to tell. Yeah. Like a lot of people will see a draft and they'll hear the casters say a draft is bad and then they'll go on social media and they'll trash the draft. But yeah. It's really hard to know without knowing what's going on behind the scenes. Like sometimes players can't play a specific champion. Sometimes players have had bad or good scrim results on stuff that seemingly, in the opinion of the casters and the public, is negative. So I feel like a lot of the public's opinions on coaches is just really binary. And it's, it's not their fault, of course. Like they just don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So I think it's really just the orgs themselves and the players that actually know what's going on. I've been talking to a lot of people in my interviews this week so far about sort of their thoughts on the community reaction. Because so many people dive into these Reddit threads, the post-game threads, yep. and sort of see this stuff. Is there anything that you feel like people are getting particularly wrong or any corrections that you'd like to throw out there? People saying, oh, Adrian is this, or Hooney only wants this, or something like that that you feel needs to be corrected? Um, not particularly. Uh, I think a lot of people 
for our team in particular, Immortals, they just see that we're not winning every game in 25 minutes and feel like we're not the same as we were last split, which I think it makes sense for their perspective, but for us, we're just more concerned about growing and we think we've actually improved quite a bit. Um, maybe for the first couple weeks, Huni did play Tank Echo one game and he played Trundle yesterday. Like, obviously, Huni is capable of playing tanks if they're, they're meta, of course. Right. Like, that was a bit, but other than that, like, honestly, I, nothing in particular, no. Very good. Well, is there anything that you would like to say to any of the Immortals fans here at the end of the interview? Um, no, well, just thanks to all the fans for supporting us. It's the reason we can do what we do um, and cheer for us, and hopefully we can keep winning and uh, win the split. Thank you so much for the interview, Dylan. It's uh, good to sort of get your insight as people are saying, oh, Immortals isn't that strong. It sounds like you think that you guys are having a great time, so thank you so much for the interview. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of our coverage of all things esports here at Yahoo Esports.